Right. Yo, 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 peace. Welcome back, man. We've got another episode here of Plot and Progress. I got the brothers with me. We've got uh, one of our members that wasn't able to make it to episode number one. He's in the building as well, man. So shout out to the crew. Uh, and we've got an excited, jam-packed episode for you today as we get ready to first off introduce our brother and, and then talk about some of the, the topics that we discussed on the previous episode. Dope build last time, y'all. Let's keep, let's keep it going. Uh, to, to kick us off, though, I want to turn it over to my brother, Brother Bilal. We mentioned him a little bit last time on our last episode, but we wanted to also allow the opportunity for him to uh, just share a little bit about himself and, and what really brought him to the table, what, what, what really got him into this venture that we're on, y'all. Yes, sir. I appreciate that strong intro as well. And man, it's uh, it's uh, my apologies for not being on the first one, but I'm happy to be here on the second one to make sure this thing keeps moving as it's been doing since, uh, since we had the idea. So as the brother, uh, brother Nick mentioned, I'm brother Bilal, Bilal Munir Rahim to be exact. Um, I started our Black Fathers mm -hmm. Committee, which is uh, passionately known around the community as a. Uh, Black Fathers Committee. We do uh, several different events. Mainly, our 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 goal is to uh, change the narrative on Black fatherhood. Um, I think over the last few years, it has been changed just by my personal circle, and even some sometimes uh, I can see it in my extended circle as well. So I do believe that that narrative is changing, but I also want to make sure that it continues to be. Uh, told correctly uh, that black fathers are not only the original man, but the greatest man as well. And I want us to be able to um, express that in our daily lives, our daily living and so forth. So that's how I, I actually met all of you brothers as well. Um, just through our all individual uh, goals of self-development and trying to be, a, uh, not trying, but striving to be around righteous brothers in a righteous community. Um, and just through that, through that small little effort there, um, it's created what we have now, the growth spot. So just from that small little idea of wanting, wanting more, wanting be better for ourselves and our families got us to this point here. Um, the growth spot legacy. And uh, as you can see, I'm kind of long winded, so I can keep going all night, but, but uh, I do know that we're here for uh, intentional reasons, and I want to definitely go ahead and kick this off. Yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> Greatly appreciate you joining. And, man, again, as the brother mentioned, man, we, we're building. And so as we continue to build, we'll continue to, uh, you know, to share more about who we are, and you guys will continue to learn a lot more about who we are as well. And speaking of the, the previous episode, Brother Bilal, we had the opportunity of talking in and just, 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 just talking about what it means to, first off, for the growth spot, what it means for the legacy, and really just talking about how this thing got started, man. It, it started off of an idea, off of a call. We talked a little bit about that. So if you haven't checked out that previous episode, uh, please do yourself a favor and check out the previous episode because it's going to give you some good gems and nuggets around uh, what it means to build collectively and be on one path, one mission, uh, one one wavelength, so to speak, and, and building with brothers and, and removing a lot of that fear. We talked about that fear factor last uh, episode as well, but being able to get beyond that fear and, and moving forward with progress, man. So, so that said... Man, we, we've got some really good stuff for this episode. So, you know, when we think about what it means for the growth spot, what did it take for us to come together to start this, what we have, this conglomerate of brothers together, the brotherhood that we have that we call the growth spot legacy? Well, I do want to just touch back based uh, on what I just mentioned as well, because after that phone call we had last night, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we that's how we all came together. So every Tuesday nights, we also build on fatherhood as well with other brothers in the community. But one of the things that we talked about last night was that it's just taking it back to the basics, right? And it's the bottom line of where everything is, the foundation. And ours was our all of our foundations individually is this that thought, just that single thought of wanting to do better. You feel mm -hmm. me? And uh, I don't think that yeah. that should be overlooked at all, that it can start from that small little thought. 
Absolutely. It's just that's how everything starts, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. I can um, see. Oh, I, I just want to mention uh to add on to uh Brother Bilal's uh, introduction. Uh, what was it called, Bilal? The the Black Men Summit? Uh the rebranding of the Black Man Summit. The rebranding of the Black Man Summit was a, a event that Brother Bilal put together some years ago, which yeah. uh it just shows how when black men get together, what they can do, because a lot of us in the community out here, that's how we met each other. You know what I'm saying? And from there, like a lot of other things uh, transpire. But in regards to like um, recapping last episode, something was mentioned about like how we don't really like personally know each other. And that's not necessarily true because we got two brothers, two members on on, on, on the call who are part of the best hip hop group in Arizona, right? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know what I'm yeah. um, me, 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 and uh, brother Kylon, we, we 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 both uh, were instructors in a in, in a archery uh, program called the Vanguard. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I trained with brother James, who hasn't been on one of the shows yet, but we do know each other somewhat. You know what I'm saying? I, I just think yeah. like if anybody watched the last episode, uh, they would they, they would think like, oh, they didn't even know each other. So yeah, we. We do know each other a little bit, though. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but the call, the call is what got us all together collectively. Um, those calls, and, and, and for those that don't know, we do a, a, a father Zoom call every Tuesday at 6 p.m. for, I think it's going on three years now. Um, yeah. Wow. And that's, that's how we all met uh, initially. And then... Um, we all build started building from there. So, uh, everybody, any any fathers watching the call or watching this episode, you, you, you're more than welcome to uh, join mm -hmm. in on that call every Tuesday evening at uh, 6 p.m. Arizona time, which is Mountain Standard, I believe. Um, you can go to the Our Black Fathers Committee page or or Our Black Fathers Committee or obfc.az on Instagram to get the the uh, number. Uh, for the Zoom link every week, but that's how we all end up linking up initially um, to get into how we started to to get the land yeah. or going about trying to purchase some land. It just it just kept coming up in conversation about uh, being that we're all fathers and, and and we we all talked about generational wealth and how to leave a legacy. Um, what can you do to build a to to leave a legacy and build a legacy and 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 purchasing land just kept coming up in the conversation, and um, you know I forgot who it was, but somebody was just like, "Yo, man, let's we talked about this three or four times. Let's 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 set it up and do it." Yeah, I won't say no names, but it was actually a brother who did not decided not to take advantage of the opportunity. So the brother who actually really? who said wow. who said. You know what? Let's just stop talking and let's go do it. And we set a date to view it. That is true. That, that brother wasn't that brother wasn't present at that time. Hmm. And that brother that brother yeah. has also had other opportunities to to be involved as well. But that just goes to show you, like sometimes you might just need to speak up and and, and help push other brothers forward yeah. as well. That doesn't mean that his opportunity may not be coming. But if he never, if he would have never spoke up at that time, then who knows where we would have been with the exactly. conversation as well. Yeah. So, if you, just because you might think you're not ready, if you're around a lot, some brothers who 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 talk like they are, and and, and you got a good feeling that they are, start pushing the conversation forward towards some action because you never know where that can go. Yeah, man. So speaking of that. Um, we 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 pushed the envelope very fast on being able to do this so kind of walk us through step by step like what was it that that you know after we had the call we had the idea we came together what 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 took place man what transpired for somebody that's on the outside looking in you know what what did what did we do to come together as the growth spot we stand on business. No. Stand on business. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think sure. a lot of it, a lot of it, kind of comes back to what we talked about earlier, which is being in direct alignment with some of the core principles and values. Because um, not to spend a lot of time talking about the call, but I think that um, one of the things that makes that call um, 
very special is that it's a consistent group of people, right? That's how you know that we all are in direct alignment at our core and what we believe of our for our foundation, right? Because I've been on the call now two years and it's been consistently the same brothers. We add some brothers and it's growing and it continues to grow. There's people that come in and they leave. There's people that are invited and they never show up. And so I think that the first most important component to that is the fact that we are all in direct the alignment with a lot of our core values and our core principles and what we believe. And so being that all of our foundations are pretty much the same, um, I think that that has to have been the catalyst for us to move forward. Otherwise, I don't think that we would have felt comfortable uh, mobilizing in such a way to not only put our thoughts and our feelings and our ideas, our time and our energy, but equally as important, our money um, yeah, is sure. also on the line with this. And so I think that was the first component is, is that we spend enough time in dialogue and in communication and in expressing our foundational interests that then it just kind of became, all right, well, you know what? I think this is the synergy that we need to now mobilize on this idea and, and bring, speak truth to power, essentially. Yeah, right. and you know, the, 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 I call it the nomenclature. The nomenclature is that a group, a group of brothers can't get together and do anything, you know what I mean? But we were able to prove that, that false narrative easily. So as you mentioned, right, the principles, but, but what else, what else went into it? Well, I mean, again, uh, we, we have a, many of us have a background of what others was doing in the community. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I went to the, the, the ready expo, one of the sisters who had, a um, she had one of the, uh, the more, the more important, uh, speaking parts. Uh, she said that, uh, the hardest part about doing something like this, you know, getting land is uh, finding like minds you could do it with because, you know, we have issues with trust issues with family and for sure and things like that. So we already knew what like a lot of brothers was doing in the community. Like, you know, um, some some of the things I mentioned before, like, you know, Brother Bilal with the rebranding of the black man. So people know know about what I was doing. People know about what Kailan was doing. So it was easy to get together as collectors. Like these brothers have already shown and proved like you know, you know how they how they uh, so serve the community, and even cats I didn't even know that well. Just from the call, like I was comfortable with just going in on it with them. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's a very <clears throat> like if if you are doing the work, people are gonna see that, and they're gonna yeah. be they're gonna be comfortable with you. Like I didn't have no problems with anybody that was involved with this. It I got a like, question regarding that. Where where does the 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 genuine distrust come from when it comes to, to doing uh, stuff like what we're doing. I see in this group that I'm in on Facebook, um, somebody made a post and it was, it was, some, it was about a land purchase too out there in Glendale. I don't know if it was legit or not, but it was uh two acres or something for like 60 G's. And he was just like, Oh, I, I, if everybody, if 30 people put 2000 in, we can just buy it. And then, some people was like with it. And then, but the majority of, of it right. was just like, Nah, that's scary. Like this, this is you know what I mean. This right. that ain't that's a, that ain't a lot of land, or that's a lot of money to come up with, and just not yeah. know who we do it in. And so, where does that genuine distrust come from? Let me. Let well, me add I, I, I I think it's healthy to have a level of skepticism um, when mm -hmm. it comes to any type yeah. of collective venture like that, especially when it's individuals that you don't know. Right. Um, Absolutely. So, so I, I think that's an understandable position um, in the genesis of, of of such interaction. So. You have, I mean, I feel like we're privileged because Brother True spoke to like the other interactions that we've had before this particular one, which allowed us to kind of like build like equitable relationships um, prior to this particular effort. Um, so time, time is your friend in that manner, um, because people can, um, you know, they can show up with their representative for a, you know, minimal amount of time just to kind of win you over the with a particular color. narrative. Right. Mm, but right. you really you, you really need time to show you um, to reveal who that person really is to see if it's yeah. consistent with what they you know, what they kind of uh, put put out, you know. So I think that's where it's where it comes from um, that and just you, you got to consider um, experiences, too. Right. Everyone has a storyline where they've been burnt. Right. 
Mm -hmm. uh, whether it be in business, family, friendships, um, that list goes on. So unfortunately, that puts a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. And considering that where we are now with um, social media, um, a lot of this terminology gets kicked around so much that I feel like some people get numb to the idea of it and they may not fully understand wh- what what does it mean to say generational wealth or um, asset right. liability. Um, most people learn best when they are hands on uh, with, with with those particular uh, situations. So um, I think that 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 is the biggest barrier, the, the trust issue. Um, once you get beyond that, it's just a matter of commitment. You know what I mean? Showing up. And then when you have a collective um, that is on the same accord, um, it doesn't take a lot from any single individual. You know, if you want to go quick, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. So Mm. um, I think it reinforces um, the momentum when you have that trust. Yeah. Because now you've, you know, everyone's a, a crutch if they have to be, you know, so it relieves some of that pressure which allows more space for creativity, for energy, just for motivation to keep this thing going. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You're absolutely right. I think part of it is that um, one of my favorite quotes from Einstein, I'm going to probably paraphrase it. I hope I don't butcher it. But he says that a question that you have to ask yourself, a vital question that you have to ask yourself is, you know, what type of universe do I live in, a hostile universe or a friendly universe? And a, a certain measure of skepticism is definitely in order when you're navigating a world in which a lot of people operate in fear and out of paranoia. And that fear drives people to do things that are not always on the up and up. It causes people to, to, to steal, to rob, to mislead. And so yeah. there certainly should be a, a lot of skepticism when you deal with that. But I think that what ends up happening is, is that it also comes down to people not really believing in themselves. And so for me, having been one of the few people, especially when I had first started the call two years ago, I didn't have a direct relationship with anybody in the organization. Everybody kind of knew each other and in, in, in certain measures and certain ways. Um, but I think that what ends up happening is, is that coming into a place where everybody had already shown and proved and was heavily active in the community and was standing yeah. on, like Bilal said, business. Exactly. It made it easier to be trustworthy as opposed to just, a, if it had been seven people that had no relationship, no idea, no identity, there was no presence anywhere. Like I couldn't go online and see the work that you were doing, or exactly. I couldn't talk to somebody and say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah that brother's doing this, that, and the third then it would have been a lot of skepticism. It would have been a lot of hesitancy on a lot of people's parts because I, I don't know you guys from a can of paint. So it's been my experience that you, it's difficult. It's not impossible, but it can be difficult to trust people regardless of where they come from or what they look like, especially when you start talking about a lot of the stigmas that come from our community. So Absolutely. I think that, that, that also made it work, like, like brothers have said, man, that to have people that you can see tangibly uh, putting in work and doing things that 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 come from a place of wanting to help and wanting to lead and wanting to better our community, I think makes it easier than to be more trusting with your time, your energy, your thoughts, and your money. Right. And so, and we want we want to you know each one teach one. We want people to impl- implement yeah. what we're doing as well, right? So that's a jewel you have to hold on to. So like, if somebody comes with an opportunity or some type of uh, you know, whatever. What are they doing in the community? Who know who who can vouch for these people? Who knows? Yeah. These people? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is the that? vetting process. You, you know, know that's that that's in anything you have to be able to vet all of the participants yeah. in some way or another, um, because blind faith doesn't necessarily have to hinge on the blind as much as it does the faith, right? You can have yeah. blind yeah. faith without being blind or being dumb because essentially that's what people will assume that, Oh, well, man, that was just dumb that you would just trust these brothers. You don't even know. Well, I mean, it's not that I'm trusting people that I don't know. Cause it's easy to vet y'all. You know what I mean? Or it's easy to vet a lot of the people in this organization. You just go to grassroots and spend some time there. And all of a sudden you'll be able to say, Oh yeah, I know that brother, man, we was at this event and that event. Social media also allows you to be able to see the work that people were doing um, and so it just I think that it was just the perfect culmination of time and events and most importantly, opportunity 
uh, that allowed this thing to take 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 shape and take form the way that it did. Definitely. Cool. I think that uh, to answer the question also is like the the genuine distrust comes from um, most of the time what people's actions of what they're doing, what we what we actually get to see from people um, who have had the opportunity to be in these positions. So like, yeah, like you said, it's experiences. And I think the best way for us to like combat that is just make sure that we don't fall on that side of the line. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because we can't necessarily control what other people are doing, but mm-hmm. we can we can continue to change the narrative one brother or one father at a time or however we do it, but just focusing on self and passing that on whatever yes. you got that's good to the next brother so he can work on himself yeah. as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Intentions. What are your intentions? If you have good intentions – then it's easier to be trusting of other people. Uh, but if you got sure. bad in, if you got bad intentions, that's what you're leading with. So you're thinking, nah, I can't trust you, brothers, because because you'll steal the money or 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 you won't put me yeah. on the D, or you know what I'm saying? You'll come and do some shady stuff on the back end. And oftentimes people that sh- lead with that narrative, that's generally been either their experience as it has been done to them or something that they have done. Yeah. You know, so I think that that also too, knowing that people can come into this with good intentions, I can recognize when you come into this thing with good intentions. I've I've had enough revolutions around this earth to know when somebody is leading with bad intentions versus somebody is really about what they talk about, about what they say. Right. Plus, you got to ask yourself: Is it worth it? We take chances on worse or less. Man. You know? Absolutely, we, absolutely. Especially as me and we go, we go jump off the off the roof just because somebody said we couldn't do it. You feel me? And right. so, so with that being said, it's like even if the possibility was, I mean, there obviously there is going to be a possibility that you may get burned, you may get played, and so forth. But what's the what's the is it worth it to you though? Yeah. Like, what's the risk? You know what I mean? After you do your vetting process and so forth, how much does it really mean to you? Hey, so I think I, that's I, a, to be honest, to get this right, I'd be willing to lose a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's a perfect segue into what it took now financially and also time and efforts wise to go from a call and a yeah. dialogue to now we have this land and now we're actually doing stuff on this land. Who wants to tackle can that? I, can, can I give Can I give a context piece before we do that, though? Mind you, this this call that we're talking about is is a virtual event. So that being said, uh, some of us hadn't even had an opportunity, I believe, to meet in person before uh, we you know we started this venture. That being said, we did have a great meeting point. So, brother True, I think that may be great for you to take that. We had a great meeting place for all of us to come together to sit down and then let's really start this building thing. That's that's how we did it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the main that's the main thing that I remember. I remember we, we met up a couple times, right? And um, and I think actually Kylon could take this piece because it was dealing with the Dow, right? Come on! To, oh yeah. Speaking of that, we got to continue to bring that back up because we got that on our agenda that we keep. So yeah. keep going. My bad. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely something that we intend to integrate into this particular effort, and I'm sure others. Um, but I, I do agree. I think we should demystify the actual logistics of what it took to kind of bring this together, because I For think sure. that is, I think that is one of the other barriers. Um, Considering that it's uncharted territory for a lot of people, um, people may make it seem um, bigger than what it is to actually, exactly. you know, entertain something like this um, and mobilize on it. Um, so typically, uh, purchasing land, um, it's a different process than the typical process for like purchasing a home via mortgage. Yeah. Um you can purchase ca- cash as king, right? So that's always an option. If you have cash, um, you could make a cash um, transaction with an owner or, you know, a company. Um, there's a lot of uh, yeah. like companies popping up now that are kind of getting um, large um, volumes of land and just kind of splitting that up into parcels for sale. Um, that seems to be a common thing. I'm sure it's something that's, you know, it's been around. It's not a new thing. 
Um, but I feel like with the technology that we have today, especially, it's a lot more accessible um, to yeah. find these and it's just easier to do business, right? So that cash payment, the benefit to that would be, obviously it's a much quicker process, right? Um, you got the cash, you agree on that number, the deal is done essentially. Um, Absolutely. And then obviously the other benefit to that is that considering that you have cash, just like with anything else, you have more leverage to negotiate because if someone knows that you have a <clears throat> cash amount then they're willing to work with you because they know they don't have to burden themselves with financing that process over a duration of time. Um, yeah. I think the only disadvantage to that would be, you know, for the buyer is like, obviously your liquidity is tied up into that asset now because you're literally um, handing over that cash. Um, but cash is king, right? So, you know, that's probably perhaps um, the best option for some, but, um, in most cases, typically banks will not, traditional banks will not finance um, land purchases, uh, vacant land purchases. They kind of stay away from that. Uh, most banks don't have any experience with that. And without any structures or any kind of development involved, um, I presume they, they, they assess that as being uh, more of a risky investment. So most traditional banks will not finance you. Um, so what we actually mobilized on and what, in my opinion, makes land purchasing much more accessible is owner financing. So essentially, in a nutshell, what that is, it could be an individual or an entity that owns that particular parcel. And basically, they set their own terms on how they're going to finance that purchase with the buyer. Um, so in most instances, the um, the amortization schedule for that purchase is going to be anywhere from five to 10 years. It could be shorter. Or in some cases, they can do custom uh, periods based on how much you're willing to put down. Um, so <clears throat> the benefit to that is obviously you don't have to deal with the hassle that a bank may present as far as like getting into your business, um, mm -hmm. pre-approval uh, requirements and, you know, I think we all know how banks do. They they want to turn over every stone, look in every closet you got. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really digging into you. And, um, you know, along that process, like, for instance, when you're purchasing a house, if you make the wrong purchase at the wrong time, you know what I mean? It could all come crumbling down on you, that process. And that's yeah. disheartening for a lot of people. So in this instance, um, you're working directly with that owner. And it's a much more simplified uh, process. Disadvantage with owner financing would be um, usually it's going to be a higher interest rate. Uh, but there again, the overall duration of the loan is going to be shorter. Um, so your path to ownership is going to be uh, a, a shorter, a shorter uh, journey um, in most instances. So just for like rough example, let's say if you come across a parcel and it's uh, $50,000 for that parcel. Um, the company that we work with, um, I think the minimum, um, so they had like a tiered structure where you could pick different options. Um, it could be like a 10% down payment for like an 8% interest, for, for, for example. Let's, let's just use rough numbers. So what does that mean? For a $50,000 property, that 10% uh, down payment is what it's five grand right so when you consider okay especially if you're going into this with a collective with a group of people all of a sudden that is much more achievable right yeah five grand you split that up five ways that's only a thousand dollars per individual and that gets you access right you make that down payment you got boots on the ground so yeah, essentially absolutely. As long as you don't default, that is your property. And let me interject real quick. For the yeah, go ahead. Don't know, do you need? Mm -hmm. I know the answer, but do you do you have to have credit? Is credit an issue in trying to purchase or do owner financing? Is, is credit a, a, a factor? Absolutely that's not. That's absolutely not. And that's something that I failed to mention. That's the other benefit is that credit is not required. And all, also, um, 
once you get into these arrangements um, with owner financing, that doesn't show up on your credit report. Why? Mm -hmm. Because no banks are are involved in that process. Yeah. So as long I, as you I can think, make. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to add another caveat to that. I also income verification was also another thing that they were. Yep. If you had to if cash is king. So if you have the money available to make the down payment, um, they're not going to ask you about how much money yep. you make. Where do you work? Can we verify your employment? Can you send us some bank stuff? Like you said, that encumbersome process that you deal with banks. So the pathway is definitely a lot easier. Hmm. Right. Do you have the money or not? Essentially, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, which is, I mean, that's, it makes the process so much more simpler. Um, so, so, so there again, um, it's much more attainable, um, when, when you go in with owner financing, because you relieve that pressure that comes from the financial institutions and the oversight that they are adamant about. Um, so for instance, um, with, with the example I was kind of articulating, um, after you make that down payment, the rest of that principal amount is going to get split up into monthly payments um, just based on the interest rate. Right. So um, using this example, um, our situation is not much different from these numbers. So I'll just throw like a ballpark number uh, for like a monthly uh, premium to maintain this this uh, owner finance property. Let's say it's 350 bucks, right? There again, if you have a collective, that payment on a monthly schedule is much more uh, manageable moving forward. And from that, you have done something monumental. Why? Number one, because I personally believe it's the most uh, valuable asset there is because it's foundational to everything that is produced. Mm -hmm. And then... Number two, it's a finite, it's a finite uh, resource. Um, land is not, well, I guess land is somewhat being manufactured. You'll, you'll see like the islands and stuff that they're creating in the Emirates. Yes. Yeah, but small that, stuff, that, yeah, that's a, Way that's a lim, that's a, that's a limited um, application. Right. And right. it has a specific purpose that isn't necessarily um, true to what owning actual land is. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so if you ever, driven across the country, you'll see there's tons of land out there. Um, tons of land. There's, pl there's, there's plenty of opportunity. And I think the process reinvigorates something in our spirits because it forces us to think outside of the matrix, outside of the infrastructure um, that I personally believe we're kind of handicapped by because we're dependent on all these mechanisms that right. most of us don't have any control over. Um, owning land um, allows you to at least have the opportunity to, uh, you know, install some of these mechanisms on your own terms in your own space. That's key. Yes, sir. Give us give us like one or two uh, examples of those mechanisms, just in case, just in case somebody's not picking it up. What are some of those? OK. Examples? OK, so. What what does everybody do in the city when the grid goes down? Right, we get a we get a storm. It, it knocks out the transformer, knocks down a power pole, whatever the case may be. Right, uh, most people are sitting on their hands uh, or making a phone call for an update. When are y'all coming to fix this? Right, you don't know where you are in that priority list. <laughs> so literally, you at somebody else's mercy for an essential aspect of your life, electricity, right? Um, most of the, all the appliances we use, electricity, right? Um, especially here in Arizona in the summer, right? It's very critical that you have that AC blowing on you. And if you like me, I can't sleep when I'm hot. So that's going to disrupt my whole lifeline, right? Um, that's just one aspect. Um, water, I mean, it's, it's the thing that you know, we can't go very far without um, that. That's another thing. What happens if uh, the water source is contaminated or if there's some type of uh, water main break and all of a sudden you don't have that, you know, um, just simple things that we take for granted on a day daily basis. Um, when you own land, um, again, considering that we're in Arizona, we have all this sun exposure. 
So you can take full advantage of solar power um, for many applications, right? Um, yes, if you're in a if you're in a space where there is a natural water source, um, there's various technologies that you can use. But one of the 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 most simplistic ones that's been around for hundreds of years is you know um, installing a well on your property, right? So those are per perhaps the most foundational to our, like our everyday living, like electricity, water, um, sewage would be another one. Um, there's applications that could be um, installed on, on your property, such as a septic system. Um, so if you're doing all this on your property, especially if it's um, not tied into like municipal um, infrastructure, um, there's an opportunity for you to ha have control over those essential um, utilities on your own terms. Right. Right. Don't, Very important for self-preservation. The number don't, one rule. Don't forget about the food either. What happens when the store shut down? Ooh, Go absolutely. Ooh, ooh. You gotta work. We saw what happened with the pandemic. Right, Kylan? Right Indeed. Uh, so, what was so, it? Uh, toilet tissue, right? Indeed. So, so and, I, I and, really, and, what you were Lost saying though, briefly, it was it's not as hard as people make it out to be, and it could be done if you put your ducks in the row, research it a little bit, and make it happen. Basically, yeah, and, and we just showed and proved all that. And, and then just think about it, like why, 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 why is it a, a stigma that is that it's uh, hard to do that, right? Yeah. Well, let's let's yeah. talk specifics to kind of give people a little bit more context into how that looks to help to kind of break up the stigma. I know uh, somebody brought up that we had met a couple of times. What was some of the dialogue that was centered around these conversations and what was the pathway? Like, what was the steps? We we get on this call, we talk about it, we meet a couple of times at grassroots. Like, what does that look like? Who wants to tackle that one? Well, I know, bro, Nick, Nick, Nikia, you brought up uh, Land for Grabs. There, there was there was another one. Uh, Colin, do you remember what... Um, Arizona land for sale. Land, land watch. Land, land watch. watch. Um, land watch. Yep. Yeah. So basically, man, we 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 met up. We talked about it. Kylon had already purchased some land of his own, uh, so he kind of had the blueprint. Hey, can you do the uh, do the uh, the applause, the applause right for there. That. Right. Right. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you for being <laughs> a pioneer, man. Yeah. He, he Indeed. Helped, well, he I'm I'm a, a I'm a bit be I'm a beneficiary of someone else that kind of put me on um, mm -hmm. to this particular process as well. So, um, but th that speaks to the power of network, right? Right. Um, and the importance of being exposed um, to certain concepts because a lot of things are out of sight, out of mind until you have that exposure. So mm -hmm. um, I'm fortunate for that. And from there, it's like, once you, once you know better, it's on you to do better, right? Yeah, right. So I think, um, you know, it's funny, uh, true, he he spoke to the uh, the COVID um, episode that we all endured, and that's what really lit the fire up under me. Um, just to kind of start thinking in that way, being truly self sufficient, and just thinking outside of the box. Um, so from there, it was just committing to, you know, what made sense to me. Like it was practical, and just following through. And then once I did that, um, you know, you're enthusiastic about what you've accomplished. And fortunately, you know, it's not, well, I would say it's unfortunate that there are people that ac achieve things or they get access to certain things and they and they feel like they can't share that with people because of, you know, whether it be perceived jealousy or just, you know, complicated relationships that they may have with people. But I'm fortunate enough um, that I don't feel that way you know, about what I'm doing, what I've done. And I was happy to share the information because I know, um, you know, who am I to, to, to take any piece of information with me to the grave or, or hold it tight and, and, and not offer that to the world or to my, my collective, my peers, um, because that in itself is planting a seed. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's, it's just like the concept still sharp and still, um, when you have multiple minds on a particular initiative, that's going to give it more fuel um, to go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So we ended up forming an LLC. Mm -hmm. 
And with that LLC, we, uh, you know, we set that up with the state. Then we had a bit of, then we set it up a business bank account. Then I think EIN. That, EIN. EIN. Then we, did we drive up there and take a look after that? Or well, did I we think, have the money? We had the money first, right? We put a, yeah, so how, I what think. Was what happened was we came together, we talked about it. Um, I think that we looked, we, every, the goal was that everybody would kind of identify a couple of different locations for land. And the more everybody looked at the different land apps and the sites, I think everybody kept going back to St. John's. We looked, there was other places that popped up in the chat, yeah. but I think St. John's kept coming up as a common theme. Um, and then it got to a point where, okay, now we've done a lot of talking and we've done a lot of looking and searching and identifying, but we really need to get some skin in the game. And the only way to get some skin in the game and really move this thing forward was it was time to put our money where our mouth was. And, uh, and we came up with a number that everybody would contribute. We came up with a deadline that everybody would contribute that number. And then so once the LLC was set up, the EIN was set up and the bank account was set up, the money was put in the bank. And then it just became time to narrowing down the choices. And uh, going back to Brother Kyle on it and being the pioneer of this, he was the one that recommended um, First United Realty was the company that we use. Um, we met up with the sales rep down there. He took us on a trip, showed us a couple of parcels. We picked one that we liked, and then um, we took the necessary steps to close on that property. Yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds complicated, but in reality, looking back at the steps, um, Actually, it sounds pretty easy yeah. to me. I'm like, man, was it that easy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, but the thing is, is that people will overcomplicate the simple because you're you're right. In reality, it really was that simple. Setting up an LLC cost about thirty five bucks, um, yeah. and that was simple because it just required everybody's information, file the paperwork, pay the fee, and send it down there. Uh, EIN number from the IRS is free. You could get an EIN right away, whether you have an LLC set up or established or not. And so it was LLC, EIN, take the EIN paperwork down to the bank with the LLC paperwork. You get that set up. Uh, that was challenging only to, from the standpoint of getting everybody to have access to the account so that it was a situation where anybody could go into the bank and inquire about the account, make deposits to the account. Um, but people will overcomplicate that. Like when I start talking to people about setting up a business and I say setting up an LLC is easy, it really is easy. But I get some of the most complicated responses from people that just make it seem like it is a towering mountain when really it ain't nothing but a, but a molehill. Um, so it, for some people, that process may sound complicated to us. It sounds easy because we went through it and it was pretty much a breeze. We didn't run into any, any real major snacks or snafus, I think, really anywhere along the journey all the way up to acquiring the land. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I wouldn't say there's like a, a one size fits all. It, it's really uh, contingent on what you're looking for, where you want to be. Obviously, the more rural you go, the better the prices are going to be. Um, mm -hmm. So you do have to consider that um, yeah. with yeah. with that. Some of the challenges include like access issues. If it's way out, it's going to be hard to get to. Um, it's most likely not going to have uh, utilities um, accessible on those particular properties. So just know that if you do want to be closer to the developed areas, the, the big cities, um, you're going to have to pay for that land at a premium. Um, that that's right. obvious. So, so it, it just depends on what you're looking for. Um, but it's definitely think, uh, a feasible thing to do. I think next, the, cause I, I see we getting close to that time. I think next week, that's what we should definitely cover is, in the in in those meetings that we had before we mobilized on a property, yeah. uh, what was some of the things that we were looking the for? The do's, the don'ts, yep. right? What were some of the you know? I, I, you were very instrumental in making sure that we knew the questions to ask, that we for knew sure. what type of what type of rights we needed, what type of access we right. needed, yep. and so right. um, that kind of information is important because there was a time, uh, maybe probably about six or seven months ago, I was looking at a personal property. And I was ready to pull the trigger. And then it, when I went down and took a look at the property, I realized I'm landlocked. Man. And, and yeah. that was a term I had never heard before oh. until we started on this process. And when I, asked, yeah. when I asked the realtor about that, I says, hey, man, am I landlocked? He knew the entire time. 
and he wasn't going to say anything <laughs> to me about it. Wow. He, waited in, he waited until I said something to him and asked him to go and say, well, let me talk to the owners of the surrounding property adjacent yeah, to the road the in right, and see right. if they'll be able to car. And I was like, ah, uh, yeah. no. So, so I think that um, that's, a, that's definitely a very instrumental point in knowing what questions to ask, knowing what rights you need to obtain right. um, and what type of access uh, is necessary to make sure that you're making a good deal or a good purchase. Man, and cool. that's the that idea, that concept is what really sold us on the piece of property that we did uh, eventually go in and purchase. Because when we went out and we surveyed the land, we looked at how this land, this piece of parcel was divided. We looked at some of the, the amenities right? that are on like it. Like two or well. three, right? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, we looked we at did. we looked at two. We looked at one that was adjacent to some state trust land that was yep. kind of further west of where we are, yep. and then we looked at. Um, he said he had one that was adjacent to Bureau of Land Management, which, again, that's some other things that we can kind of talk about the differences sure. between the two um, and understanding what that means with respect to your property and how that can positively or adversely affect you. But, yeah, we did. Yeah. We looked at a couple of different properties, uh, a lot, at least two. Um, we looked at at least yeah. two and, and made the, the, the selection and the choice that we did. I would and throw we fired off once, the next once we once we viewed our actual exactly parcel, we all knew from that point you'll feel it that's you the one that's the one you'll feel it because before yeah. we all knew it you know what I mean yeah, we felt it it was a feeling that you get and yeah. I'm not sure if everybody's going to experience it I would like to say that you are especially if you go into a serious and intentional but when you yeah, for sure. when you look it over something. And you touching that land again, there's going to be some feelings that come over you that you yeah. never felt before. Nah, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. for yeah, sure. I remember uh, me and Brother True, uh, one, of, one of our goals was to touch, touch the land with our feet. Remember yeah. that, Brother True? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, we we literally put our feet in the soil. <laughs> he still walk around barefoot. <laughs> Yeah, but man, that's one of the beautiful the things. Barefoot. Let's, let's that's, make that's, how, that's how we used to do it, man. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's hey, that's what you that we, said that day. That too. is. That's, that's true. Response. <laughs> yeah. We did. Yeah, let's make so, sure that we touch on that next episode. Uh, yeah, for, for sure. sure. The factors, the questions, the issues, and what you, the questions that you want to ask and be aware of. Yeah, Anybody that's, 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 that's a real heavy word. Last words, wrapping up. No, the thing that I would say was so beautiful about it is this, man. Once we found that piece of property and we were able to stand on that property, we were like, this is it. And it caused us, we, we struck instantly. I mean, we went back that next week. The guy was like, what, the parcels were technically not available at the time. So, but they would have to wait for the following week. And by that following week, we already had our bid in on that piece of property. So it was, it was so beautiful to see that um, a vision came from a call and was put together and everyone was on board and we moved as quickly as we did. And we were able to secure that piece of property. Yes, yeah. sir. Never for underestimate sure. a small positive thought. That's mm -hmm. where it starts at. That small oh, yeah. positive thought. For sure, man. We're going to wrap things up, man. Uh, <clears throat> until the next episode, I hope y'all enjoyed yourself. I hope you learned something. I hope you uh looking at buying some land. Get, mm -hmm. Let's get to it. Yeah. Don't forget to tap in. We got our social media scrolling across the yeah, bottom. So if you haven't already that. tapped in, lock in. The email, the, the, the social media, and the website. So tap in, man. Until next time, fellas. Peace and blessings. Peace. Peace. Peace.